السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ما بعد In the eighth year of the seerah a delegation from the tribe of Abdul Qais which is in the region of Bahrain they came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم This tribe is one of the few tribes that have embraced Islam organically. There was no expedition. There was no even preacher sent to them. It just so happened they heard of Islam and they accepted en masse. And so they decided to give their oath of allegiance to the Prophet wasallam. So they sent their delegation of maybe 10-15 people. And they traveled from Bahrain all the way to Medina. And when the delegation arrived in Medina, they were so excited to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the riwayah, the reports say, they left their camels outside the masjid untied. And they rushed in wearing the same garments that they had worn throughout the entire journey from Bahrain. And they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they almost jumped upon him. They started kissing his hand and even his feet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But one person of that delegation remained outside and his name was Al-Ashaj. He is called Al-Ashaj Abd Al-Qais. And this Al-Ashaj, when he came, he tied his camel. He went and he took a, a bath, ghusl. He took out two garments that he had prepared for the journey. He never wore them. He had prepared, when I visit the Prophet ﷺ, this is what I'm going to wear. So he wore those good garments, put on perfume. Then he entered the masjid. And when he entered, he had dignity, he had wisdom, and he talked to the Prophet ﷺ asking very intelligent, very wise questions, unlike the rest of you know, the delegation. When the Prophet ﷺ saw this Al-Ashaj, he said, this is the hadith I began three days ago, so I gave the whole story today now. He said, you have two characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. In the fiqh khislatayn, you have two characteristics Allah loves. Number one, Al-Hilm. We'll get to Al-Him in another lecture. It can be translated as wisdom and it can be translated as controlling your anger. And number two, he said, Al-Anatu, acting thoughtfully. Today's brief lecture will be about that second characteristic, acting thoughtfully. To be a mu'min, to have the characteristics of a mu'min, you don't act impulsively. You don't act rashfully. You don't act on the spur of the moment. No, the believer plans. The believer thinks things through. The believer has an entire vision and then enacts that vision. The believer is not impulsive. Our Prophet wasallam was so impressed at Al-Ashaj. He said, these are the two characteristics that Allah loves. By the way, I said this two days ago, three days ago. Al-Ashaj asked, Ya Rasulullah, and this shows his wisdom. Ya Rasulullah, are these two characteristics acquired by me or did Allah create me having them? And the Prophet said, no, you were born with them. These are natural with you. So Al-Ashaj, look at his wisdom. He said, Alhamdulillah, who bestowed upon me two characteristics that Allah loves. Alhamdulillah, he gave me these akhlaq. As I said three days ago in the beginning, even if you don't have akhlaq, you can learn to acquire them. Point is, today's brief lecture will be about a rarely discussed characteristic, and that is in Arabic, it is called Al-Ana, and that is proceeding with thoughtfulness, not acting rashly. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Tirmidhi and Abu Ya'la, Al-Anatu min Allahi wal ajalatu min ash-shaytan. And some of the scholars say this is slightly weak hadith, but the concept is authentic. Al-Anatu min Allah, acting thoughtfully is a gift from Allah. Wal ajala, acting impulsively is from shaytan. And in the hadith in Abu Dawood, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, acting with wisdom and thought is always something that is blessed. Not acting rashfully is something that is blessed. Except when it comes to good deeds, then you don't have to think twice, you do them. When it comes to this dunya, Thinking things before you do them is always good in this matters of this world. But when it comes to a good deed, you have time to give charity. Don't think too much, give it. You have time to pray to rak'at. Don't think too much, just pray. So when it comes to a good deed, you may act impulsively. But when it comes to any matter of this world, any matter, you should not act rash, rashfully. Our Prophet 
said Hadith ibn Tirmidhi that acting thoughtfully al-ana is one of the characteristics that all of the prophets khislam and khisal and nubuwa all of the prophets have been given this the prophets do not act rashfully as a rule there are one or two exceptions we will talk about that and Allah Azza wa Jal criticizes multiple times in the Quran acting without thinking Allah Azza wa Jal says خلق الإنسان من عجل that man is created in haste Allah Azza wa Jal says خلق الإنسان عجولا man is created he wants things immediately he cannot have patience and wait and Allah Azza wa Jal criticizes the kuffar of the Quraysh so many times that فلا تستعجلون don't be hasty don't be hasty be patient and this is something that is a constant theme even throughout the story of the Quran that thinking things through is praised and acting rashfully is something that is not praised so for example in the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam story he acted impulsively right he acted impulsively and what happened happened because he acted impulsively in the story of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam when the guard of the king came and said the king's calling you he did not act impulsively he had a plan he had an agenda and he said go back to the king and find out the details of that story because he had a plan because he has thinking things through and he was not hasty that one delay caused him to be raised up in the ranks of the king and the king immediately appointed him to be the minister had he acted impulsively had he rushed out of jail so much so even our prophet said may allah bless my brother yusuf he said this in the hadith sahih muslim had i been in the jail and the king's guard came to me i would not have been patient i would have just rushed out finally let out but yusuf alayhi salam acted thinking things through and he had the plan he said go back to the king and ask the king of that story because of that delay and that thoughtfulness when he was released within five minutes he's automatically made the minister this is what al-ana or thinking things through mean you musa alayhi salam and khidr right musa got frustrated with himself actually and he said khalas khidr next time i ask a question we're going to part our ways our prophet said may Allah have mercy on Musa had he not been impatient had he not acted in ajala he would have seen amazing things but he got hasty and impatient so we see all of this acting patiently and impatiently acting in haste and acting things through and our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us and even his wives to think things through in that famous incident in the seerah Long story here, but to summarize, the Prophet Sallallahu gave all of his wives the choice to be divorced and I'll give you money or to stay with me. It's a long story, but in one point in time, our mothers and they're human beings, they're the best, but they're human beings, they wanted a higher standard of living. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not want to do that because he's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not haram to ask, but he could not live like that. So after a while, one month was he was sleeping in the masjid. He then, it's in the Quran, uh, Allah gave them the ultimatum. It's in the Quran. If you want this dunya, come, I'll give you as much as you want, and then I'll divorce you. And if you want Allah and His Messenger, then this is my standard of living. He is Rasulullah Sallallahu He cannot live like a king. Long story, but the, the, the point I need to mention here, when he came to our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, he said to her that, O oh Aisha, Allah has revealed to me these verses, and there is a choice for you. Then he said, do not be hasty in making this decision. Go talk to your parents and then think about this decision. He then recited the verse to her. And then she said, do I need to ask my parents about this decision? I have chosen Allah and his messenger. Our process was worried. She might be hasty. Think the other thing. Aisha said, I don't need to ask my mother and father. I don't need the dunya. I want Allah and his messenger. But the point is he told her, do not act in haste. Think things through and talk to your parents. So this is one of the main characteristics of the believer to act with wisdom and therefore to act in haste and impulsively is not a sign of Iman or we should say it's not a sign of the uh, good mu'min. Now there are in all situations of this world we are forbidden to act in haste but in certain things it becomes even more uh, if you like haram or forbidden or at least greatly discouraged. Of them, number one, when it comes to our salah our Prophet ﷺ said, the one who prays quickly, it is as if shaitan is stealing from your salah. So ajala, especially in the salah, is definitely something that we should avoid. Number two, being hasty in our du'as. Our Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will continue to listen and respond to your du'as until you become hasty and lose your patience. They said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you mean become hasty? He said, you make du'a. 
And when you don't see it answered, you say, Khalas, Allah is not going to give it to me. And you stop making dua. Don't be hasty. Continue to make dua. Another manner specifically we should not be hasty in is to pass judgments on other people. Allah Azza wa Jal multiple times in the Quran says, be careful if an evil person comes to you, says something about somebody else, tabayyanu, find out. Don't be hasty. Don't just do something when you hear something. No, find out. Allah says in the Quran, fil ardi, that when you're traveling in the land, fatabayyanu, make things clear. And if somebody says he's a believer, then assume he's a believer. So Allah is telling us, don't act on news impulsively. Also, even if you see somebody do something, our sharia tells us, ask him why. Find a way out for him. In the famous incident in the seerah, Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a did something that seems to be treason. Long story, I don't have time for everything here, but I'll gi I'm giving you references so that you can look it up. Hatib did something that appeared to be treacherous. Our Prophet did not immediately do anything. He said, bring Hatib to me. He called Hatib. He said, explain yourself, O Hatib. Why did you do this? And Hatib explained, and after the explanation, he was given an excuse. He wasn't totally forgiven, but there was an excuse that was given. The point being, we are told, do not act in haste. When you hear something, when a person says something about another person, even if you see it with your own eyes, find out. Tabayyanu. Also, we are told as well in our sharia that one of the worst things we do in haste, and we see this all the time, billah, is divorce. Divorce is never done in haste. Allah says, فَإِنْ عَزَمُ الطَّلَاقِ After they have decided, عَزَمَ You think things through and then you decide. Not haste. عَزَمَ can never be done in haste. So talaq is never given in haste. Unfortunately, the majority of talaq that happens in our community, it happens from haste. A man came to Ibn Abbas. He said, oh Ibn Abbas, I got angry. I divorced my wife a thousand times. Ibn Abbas said, you act in a hasty manner. You act in a hasty manner. Then you come to me for fatwas thinking I can find a way out. Your hastiness has destroyed you. So we have to be careful when we undertake a decision, any decision, especially the decision of marriage and divorce. It can never be done hastily. Final point. How do we ensure that we don't act in haste? Number one, never act in anger. Never act in anger. We'll have an entire lecture, inshallah, about controlling anger. We are told by the Prophet ﷺ, be quiet when you're angry. Don't act when you're angry. Learn from the mistakes of people far better than us. Learn from our Prophet Yunus ﷺ. It was human anger. He acted in that way, and then what happened, happened. Never act in anger. Number two, when you are not, as soon as you hear the news, do not, even if you're not angry, don't act immediately. Let things think through. Don't just act in the spur of the moment. Number three, get shura from people. Like our Prophet said to Aisha, ask your parents. So when there's a major decision, get the shura of other people. shura baynahum. And Allah says to the Prophet that get shura from your companions. So we get advice from people older than us, more experienced than us. And number four, pray istikhara if it's a major decision. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal for divine help. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Bottom line of the characteristics of the believer is that the believer does not act in haste. The believer does not act impulsively, but the believer thinks things through. And the believer, even in the smallest things, like al ashaj having two clothes ready packed in the garment. He had in his suitcase two clothes. He knows he's going to wear those clothes when he meets the Prophet ﷺ. Such a small detail, such a trivial point, but it shows the akhlaq of the mu'min. It shows the believers thinking things through. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, you have two characteristics Allah loves, al-hilmu wal-ana. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us all to act with wisdom and thoughtfulness and to protect us all from the evils of acting impulsively and rashfully and we'll continue tomorrow inshallah ta'ala wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah shahru ramadan alladhi unzila feehi al-qur'an hudan lin-nasi wa bayyinatin min al-huda wa al-furqan فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ 
يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون 